Now that we've talked about site determination, let's move on to the features of the bone. So first, let's begin with the upper end of this bone. So what are the special features in the upper end of the humerus? Number one is the upper end bears the head of the humerus. This head is rounded and it articulates with what? The glenoid cavity of the scapula to form the shoulder joint. Hence, it is rounded. After this, you need to know these landmarks. Very important. First, we know that this is the anterior aspect because this was known as the lesser tubercle in side determination. Lesser tubercle, since you know that this is medial because it's communicating with your trunk, this is lesser tubercle and laterally this tubercle has a groove. This groove is separating the lesser tubercle from this big tubercle. This groove is known as the intertubercular sulcus and lateral to this groove is another great tubercle which is known as the greater tubercle of the humerus. The features of the greater tubercle are that it bears an upper, middle and a lower impression because there are going to be three muscle attachments over here. Now let's talk about the three types of necks of the humerus. The first neck is the anatomical neck which separates the head from the entire upper end of the humerus. And then we have another important neck known as the surgical neck. This separates the upper end of the humerus from the entire shaft of the humerus. So this is known as the surgical neck. Importance of this neck is that the axillary nerve passes around this part. And the third neck that the humerus has is the morphological neck, which lies about 0.5 centimeter above the surgical neck of the humerus. And the significance of this is that it contains the epiphyseal line. Let's move on to the lower end of the humerus now. This is the anterior side, while this is the posterior side. The lower end of the humerus is also known as the condyle. This entire area is known as the condyle. It has an articular surface and it has a non-articular surface. So what is involved in the articular surface? This entire area with these two fossas are entire articular surface, meaning that they will articulate or they will take part in forming joints. And posteriorly, this fossa and this entire surface is the articular surface meaning that it will take part in joint formation. So what are the bones that exist on the lower end of the humerus are obviously the forearm bone, the radius and the ulna. Hence, these articular surfaces are made in special way to accommodate the radius and ulna. So before we start, we should know that this is the head of the humerus and head of the humerus is obviously medial. So the medial part, let's talk about the medial part. Medially, the bone that will articulate with the humerus will be the ulna. And from now on, you'll remember that ulnar bone is medial bone. The lateral bone of the forearm is the radius. Medial bone of the arm is the ulna. So these articular surfaces will articulate with the radius and ulna. Medially, the articular surface has a pulley surface. This part is known as the trochlea. This is for the trochlear notch of the ulna. As I mentioned earlier, this is the medial size, hence ulna is going to articulate over here. Right above the trochlea is the coronoid fossa. The coronoid fossa is going to articulate with the ulna in elbow flexion. So if this is ulna, its trochlear notch is, is articulating with the trochlea of the lower end of the humerus. When the elbow will flex, the coronoid fossa, as you can see, now will accommodate the coronoid process of the ulna. Now let's talk about this part. This is the capitulum. The capitulum articulates with the head of the radius when the elbow is extended. When the elbow is flexed, there's another fossa right above the capitulum. It is known as the radial fossa. So the head of the radius when the elbow is flexed will accommodate the head of the radius in a flexed elbow. Posteriorly, there is a huge articular surface and as you can see a fossa which is known as the olecranon fossa this is for the olecranon process of ulna now this was the articular surface let's talk about the non-articular parts of the humerus lower end medially is the medial epicondyle laterally is a prominent bony projection called the lateral epicondyle and right above these two epicondyles we have these ridges 
This is known as medial supracondylar ridge, while this is known as the lateral supracondylar ridge. So that was all about the lower end of the humerus.